Well, let's go ahead. Remember the chat and the Q&A, so make sure you get yourselves in there. Uh, the first game is a massive game, and well, look at the numbers. I don't agree with the numbers. Milan plus one sixty off of that thumping in the Milan derby. I think that we uh, we called it, and then they host Newcastle at plus one sixty five. Newcastle's first trip into Europe for a very very long time. The draw is at plus two fifty. The under over set at two and a half, with the over being at minus one twenty five. Marco here, coming to you first. I just see Milan being miles 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 too big, uh, plus one sixty. And draw no bet for the home side is minus 110. Yeah, if I had to be on either team, uh, it would be Milan. But what I would say is uh, you might want to wait on Milan um, because I think that price might get bigger. Uh, believe it or not, I just think the power of the Premier League, the money that Mina was talking about, the move has already started for Newcastle. Milan opened um, uh, at a much uh, shorter price and they've drifted since then to plus 160. I think they're about plus 130 on opening show. So that's already a reasonable leap. And that's not just because of the Derby defeat. It's, it was already occurring. Obviously, the Derby defeat may have heightened that kind of drift. Um, you know, the 5-1 defeat, it was it was pretty emphatic. And, and obviously, Pioli's taken a, a lot of battering in the press because of that. And you know, he's forced into certain changes with Tamori suspended, Kalulu injured. But, you know, we get Tamori back into the team this time around. Uh, he expects something better from Calabria. We hope that Teo Handers isn't going to be as brain dead as he was against Inter. And, and fingers <laughs> crossed, you know, there's enough ability in forward areas to cause some problems. There absolutely is. And I think we saw that last year in the Champions League because they didn't have a great group stage. But there's seriously key injuries throughout that campaign. We saw much more the the Milan that we expect to see in the knockout stages. Um, so yeah, I think they will be a, a difficult nut to crack from a Newcastle perspective. And and what do you do after you get thumped off, thumped for five by your, your biggest rivals? I think the first thing you do is kind of try to batten down those hatches and be tight, solid, competitive, put the foundations in place not to be beaten in the first game of this Champions League series in the group of death. So. Um, and I kind of flip it around and look at Newcastle and think, yes, they are, are highly rated by the market in the Premier League. So, of course, they're going to be quite a short price in the Champions League, almost regardless of the opposition outside of the Premier League. But they haven't really excelled this season. Even at the weekend, it was it was a hard-earned win against Brentford. They weren't at their best. Eddie Howe made changes. He has got a decent squad to select from, so he can freshen things up a little bit. But what I've noticed with Eddie Howe and Newcastle is not just away from home, but whenever they play the big boys or the big matches, he tends to play with the handbrake on. It tends to be some sort of pragmatism about Newcastle. They don't score goals fluently. They don't concede a huge amount either, but their record against the big teams isn't fantastic. So I did start this show looking at Milan in some sort of way, but I think it's probably best just to wait on Milan until Tuesday when the market may have moved a little bit further. You might be able to get more juice out of Milan, particularly perhaps a, a plus 0.25 start which would be a, a great opportunity to back Milan. You know, you make your money as long as they avoid defeat. But uh, I've not got a best bet right now. If I had to have a bet right now, I'd actually go under two and a half goals uh, plus money because I think both teams will want to avoid defeat here. Uh, Newcastle, for obvious reasons, away from home, match day one, group of death in the San Zero, first time back in the Champions League after a long time. Um, but also, I think Milan have got a, you know got something to prove after the weekend too and something to defend. So... Um, that's my sort of uh, reading of the game. Uh, not a strong view right now. I want to be with Milan, but no particular bet for me. Mina, I've gone with Milan, plus 160. I've not even thought about it. I thought that they wouldn't show up in the uh, Milan derby. And Newcastle's last couple of uh, away games, add to that their first yeah. Champions League game, they've been found completely wanting. I mean, you could even go like Milan minus one and think that this game's 2-0, 3-0. Yeah, I, to be honest with you, this is like the first thing even before even before this Milan derby. I was fairly certain that if there is one team that I think they can beat in this group stage, I do think that they can get um, Newcastle in this group stage. Um, I thought it was interesting, uh, largely because of that match by uh, you know from Newcastle against Liverpool. They had a great opportunity to win that match, especially when Liverpool went down to 10 men. Um, and then you just saw that they just didn't have that level of experience and belief in themselves to really go through. And I thought that taught me a lot. Now, that's one thing. I mean, Milan, one thing that they've been criticized for in the way that they've handled the derby is that they weren't pragmatic. They played into um, Inter's hands on a tactical level. Inter liked to be compact and then hit on the counterattack. Whereas on this occasion, Milan had 70% uh, possession in the first half, but they don't work well in tight spaces. 
Now, it's about knowing how to be really compact defensively. And I'm I'm not entirely sure that Newcastle are capable of it. I also think they're terrible on the counter-attack. And this is a, a team in which, if they want to, they can launch very quick counter-attacks. Premier League sides tend to leave gaps at the back. And that's one thing that I believe in. And gaps is what Milan feast upon. So... If you give them that space, there are so many different movements for them because they're not dependent on layout on the left. You've got Rinders and Loftus-Cheek through the middle. I mean, Rinders especially can be somebody that can really make the difference. You've got Pulisic potentially through the middle, Chukwese on the left, or they might alternate on the left there as well. You have different options from midfield, different options. And it's a weird tactic in the sense that it is a four... 3-3, three, three, but sometimes you'll have it go into a three-man back line because one of those fullbacks will join midfield and create even more of an attacking threat. I believe in Milan scoring goals. It's just about whether or not I believe in their defense. That's the only thing that makes me worried, but I don't believe in Newcastle's attack right now. I think they can definitely get one, but I see Milan as being able to win this match uh, because they have a point to prove. Pioli's come under so much pressure after this derby loss, which I think is rather ridiculous because we're week four and he's got an entirely new squad with 10 new arrivals. So I'm not sure how they were expecting for him to embed this entire new team and then go and be Inter, who are Champions League finalists, with like a continuity that no other team has right now. Same coach, same players for so long. The only difference they have is Marcus Duram up front. So asking so much of Milan seems ridiculous to me. But I do... I do think that this is a game in which uh, Milan can win. Um, also worth noting, seven goals conceded uh, by Newcastle. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. For me, this is. I, I think this sh- this should be a Milan win. Uh, the only thing that I would worry about is, of course, the progression of their own fullbacks because I think that's where they could hurt if if the likes of Calabria or Teo Hernandez join midfield and there's space on the wings. But so Newcastle a goal, Milan maybe two. Not maybe. Milan to score twice is plus maybe one. Maybe three, something. maybe four. Well, yeah, but I, I, mean, I think it's a lot. To yourself, if you don't want to go money line, that's fair enough. I think if yeah. they score two, they win the game, so you can take the plus 160 because it brings in 1 0. But Milan to score twice is plus 140. Newcastle going into the San Siro, Champions League night, there should be no draws in anyone's mind in this group. Draws are not going to get it done when you've got Dortmund, who could go home and away and get beat by most. Newcastle. Obviously, we'll then feast and maybe get into the conference because it'll be Newcastle or uh, Dortmund. And then you've got PSG. And PSG are not the PSG from before, so they may well be a little bit more careful. But you're asking Newcastle to go in and match up. They're failing to match up. Brentford were the better side at the weekend. Don't care what anyone says. The week before, they went to Brighton and got passed off the pitch because too many of their players are not big enough for the biggest games in the Premier League. I agree. Take that up a few notches. Night game in the San Siro. It's Milan. All the way for me. Let's have a little look at the official picks. Yeah, Milan. Money line, plus 160. Uh, Pragmatic is uh, the name of this game from... uh, from me now, and she's gone uh, draw no bet, Milan, at minus 110. I do like that Milan scored twice, by the way, at plus 140 as well. Let's go. 